Hello and welcome to a short video review of the LG C8. You can read the full in-depth review via the link in the description or by clicking the card at the top right of the video. The C8 is LG's mid-range OLED TV for 2018. The entry-level model is the B8, then there's the C8, and then moving up the line there's the E8, the G8 and the W8 wallpaper TV. Now, interestingly, this year, uh, all the TVs are the same from C up to W, but the B is slightly different. So the C8 has exactly the same picture qualities as the E and the G and the W. The differences are all cosmetic. So let's look, have a look at the C8 here. Um, basically, uh, this is the 65 inch model and it retails for £3,499, which is, I think, a pretty good price for a 65 inch OLED TV in 2018. In terms of its design, I think this is a really, really pretty TV. Uh, obviously, it's OLED, so it's incredibly thin, only a few millimetres thick at the top, um, and then a bit further down, it widens out to about three centimetres. And down there, they've got the, uh, the speakers and the electronics and the connections and all the processing and that kind of thing. That's down in the bottom. Um, but most of the TV actually is really thin. There's a one centimetre wide border around the uh, screen, uh, black border, and then there's a silver trim on the outer edge of the panel. But otherwise, it's a very minimalist design. The TV sits on what's called the Alpine stand. This not only looks attractive, actually serves a very practical purpose. The downward firing speakers, which are built on the wider bottom bit of the TV, they fire down, they go into the uh, Alpine stand, and then there's a groove along the bottom here that shoots the sound straight out towards the listener, and it actually works really well. I'd say this is one of the best sounding TVs I've reviewed in a long time. When you consider how incredibly thin it is, that's actually really impressive. Around the back, it's pretty plain. Again, minimalist appearance, both in front and behind. And there's a basic set of connections. You've got everything you need, though. I mean, they basically stripped out, LG have stripped out all the unnecessary stuff and got down to what you actually need. So what have you got? Four HDMI inputs, all full fat HDMI 2.0B. You've also got a tuner for terrestrial and satellite TV, and you have three USB ports and an Ethernet port. And of course, there's built-in Wi-Fi. In terms of controlling this TV, well, it uses the Magic Remote. And I've got to say, I absolutely love this remote control. These days, when I pick up a remote control from another TV, I automatically start doing this because um, that's how you activate the uh, point of motion on the, on the Magic Remote. Um, and I realize it isn't the Magic Remote and I'm disappointed. I just think this is a great remote control. It makes navigating the TV incredibly easy and fast and intuitive and simple. The platform, of course, remains WebOS, and um, it's been around for about what, three or four years now, and basically it's the same, but you know, they got it right, right out of the gate, so I don't see any reason to change it drastically. There's some sm small minor tweaks, but basically it's the same platform they've been using for a few years now, and it is really good, because it's so intuitive. There's a launcher bar on the bottom, you just go through and select what you want, and you can move them around, so you've got your favorite things at one end, accessing them easily, and of course it has all the services you can want. Every catch-up service is there thanks to Freeview Play. So you've got BBC, Channel 4, ITV, and Channel 5. You've also got Netflix and Amazon and Now TV and YouTube. Pretty much anything you could want is all there on that platform. Uh, I think it's a fantastic platform. It works really well. It's slick, it's responsive, uh, you know, it's just intuitive to use. It's really simple for anyone who's not even the you know, that the least tech savvy person can use this platform very easily. So I love WebOS and I like the way it's controlled too. Um, new this year are some new features. There's a improved voice control, although I honestly find using the remotes easier. And also you can now control it via Google Assistant or via Amazon Alexa as well, which uh, I actually have tried and um, does work to a degree, but again, I tend to find just picking up the remote to be an easier way of controlling the TV. So design wise, fantastic. Uh, Smart platform and uh, control wise, fantastic. Plenty of good connections as well, everything you could need. So, so far, so good. Let's get down to the brass tacks then. What about picture quality? Well, in terms of this TV, I'd say absolutely stunning. Uh, out of the box, very accurate. Almost all the errors were below one, couple just around about two, but most were below one. So pretty much a reference performance right out of the box in terms of the grayscale and also the color gamma and the tracking. Um, there's a full color management system on this TV. You've got two point and 20 point white balance controls. So getting a really accurate grayscale and gamma was pretty straightforward. And once calibrated, this was absolutely perfect. In terms of the color management system, um, again, it controls both hue and luminance and saturation, and you can get a very accurate color uh, performance as well. Really accurate tracking across all the saturation points. So in terms of a standard dynamic range, out of the box uh, measurements and um, calibrated measurements, really, really good. Absolutely reference. 
In terms of HDR, well, again, really impressive. Out of the box, um, track PQ almost precisely, uh, very good grayscale, and uh, excellent color tracking as well in terms of um, DCI-P3 within REC 2020. This year, there's an interesting feature called dynamic tone mapping. This was available last year, but it was hidden away in the dynamic contrast uh, control. This year, it has its own separate control in the menu system, and it works really, really well. It just revolutionizes uh, an HDR experience on an OLED TV. It uh, basically you know, dynamically adjusts the tone mapping from scene to scene, depending on the scene, and it's just absolutely superb. A really great feature. And I know you could say, well, if you're a purist, you should have it just tracking the, the PQ EOTF precisely, but this feature just blows, blows um, having it turned off out of the water. So in my opinion, always use it. It looks great and it works really, really well. Obviously, when you're talking about um, Dolby Vision, which is has um, dynamic, dynamic metadata within the content, then obviously you don't need that or use it. It's not even an option available then. Um, but for uh, HDR10 content, so with, with one single um, set of metadata for the entire film, it can be a really useful feature and I love it. So uh, in terms of picture quality, in terms of the measurements at least, uh, out of the box and after calibration, really, really good uh, for both SDR and HDR. In terms of the actual performance with content, again, really, a really impressive TV. Uh, lovely picture, natural colors, um, it's very bright. Um, it's certainly in SDR, more than bright enough for SDR content. And for HDR content, obviously it's an OLED. It's not gonna hit the kind of peak uh, measurements you're gonna get with uh, an LCD television, but you can get around 900 nits um, on a 10% window and probably a little bit more than that, maybe up to 1,000 nits on a very small um, piece of dip specular highlight within the image. Obviously, this isn't, can do it at a pixel level because it's uh, self-emissive, so you've basically got 8 million dimming zones here and that gives you much greater control in terms of delivering the uh, HDR experience and obviously the absolute deep blacks really extend that range because, I mean, dynamic range goes from black to peak white, so you've got the deep blacks, you've got very precise control and you've got dynamic tone mapping as well and I think the result is a really, really impressive HDR performance even though this TV isn't as bright as some of the other LCD TVs that are available. Uh, in terms of motion handling, uh, overall pretty good. Um, my one complaint really is the new, there's a new feature this year which is um, basically black frame insertion. Unfortunately, it does not work very well. There's a lot of flicker with this feature and I think it needs some work on the part of LG. I'm sure they'll be uh, fine tuning that for next year. There's also a new feature this year. It's a decontouring feature, but a bit like the dynamic tone mapping from last year, currently it resides within the MPEG noise reduction feature. So you select low and that applies decontouring, but of course it also applies a bit of noise reduction, unfortunately. Um, I'm sure that next year the menu system will include a separate decontouring feature without having to double up along with the noise, um, noise reduction feature. So uh, it works quite well, but at the moment it is applying to noise reduction, which you may not want to do. In terms of gaming, for those gamers out there, uh, input lag on this TV, 21 milliseconds, basically the same as last year. Uh, as a gaming TV, fantastic. Obviously, there is one caveat to that, which is that although I've never personally seen any, um, there is the risk, I suppose, of either image retention or possibly screen burn. If you game for long periods of time with heads-up displays, you might possibly get some image retention. I do occasionally see a bit of image retention with high contrast test patterns that have been left up for a while, but I certainly never experienced any issues with image retention or certainly screen burn when it comes to just watching normal content, watching movies and even some light gameplay. Um, but I just mentioned that as, as, as a, something that could potentially happen. It is a self-emissive technology, but obviously LG do include a lot of features designed to mitigate that danger. Uh, so overall then, what do I think of this TV? Well, price-wise, excellent, three and a half thousand pounds, and that's already dropped from when it was first launched. I'm sure it will drop even more over um, the next couple of months. Um, that's fine. In terms of design, absolutely gorgeous TV, beautiful design. Love the stand, love the look of it, love the ultra slim nature of the TV. Uh, in terms of sound quality, great sound quality, sounds superb, particularly for an ultra thin TV. One of the best sounding TVs that I've heard in a long time. Uh, in terms of the smart platform and control of the TV, absolutely state of the art. In terms of the SDR performance, absolutely superb. Uh, nothing comes close, I think, to OLED in terms of SDR performance. You've got the wide viewing angles, natural colors, deep blacks, very precise details with a with with the um, self-emissive pixels. In terms of HDR, okay, not as bright as some LCD TVs, but again, deep blacks, very precise um, specular highlights, uh, great color accuracy and tracking of um, DCI P3 within REC 2020, uh, and, and nice um, grayscale as well. So overall, I gotta say, SDR and HDR are absolutely superb on this TV. Low input lag for the gamers. Um, really, it is difficult to fault this TV. In fact, 
I can't fault it, basically. I mean, I have a few minor quibbles, things like, you know, the black frame assertion needs some work, and I'd like to see a decontouring feature being a separate control, which I'm sure it will be next year. Um, but overall, I really can't fault the C8. I think it's an absolutely superb television. And for that reason, I'm awarding it a reference status badge. It is, quite simply, the best OLED TV I've seen to date, and I can't see it being beaten this year either. Um, absolutely brilliant. Congratulations to LG for delivering such a superb TV. It really is a sweet pot spot as far as their range this year is concerned, in my opinion, and thoroughly deserving of its reference status badge. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, then please like and subscribe. And don't forget, you can see more news, reviews, articles, and videos like this at avforums.com, Europe's largest home entertainment community. Thanks for watching.